shooter. Good. Top of the key, launches a three-pointer, and that's perfect. Look out below! Oh, man, can he dunk? All Crimson oh, tied right now. Beware of Alabama in the SEC. From Tuscaloosa, welcome to this edition of the Nate Oates Show. I'm Roger Hoover alongside the head coach of the Crimson Tide, Nate Oates. And coach, before we really dive into Crimson Tide basketball, really the sports world and the entire sport of basketball has been reeling the loss of Kobe Bryant, his daughter, also their teammates uh, on that helicopter crash on Sunday. Just first of all, what was your reaction to the news, the loss of really a basketball legend in Kobe Bryant? Yeah, I mean, it's pretty tragic. I you know, you obviously not expected stuff like that comes up. It's you just kind of wow. You know, you get the first text and you're like, seriously. And then you start thinking about everything and, you know, the kind of player he was. But I, I kind of went right to you. As soon as you heard his daughter might have been on it. And then he's got four daughters. You've you seen him for the last three years since he's retired, really been more of a father than a player. So I, he started playing right at the end of my college career. So these guys that we're coaching now kind of grew up. I mean, he was playing before some of these guys were born. So for them to kind of grow up idolizing him and how hard he played, how hard he worked, how competitive he was. You got all these Kobe stories throughout and then all of a sudden he just passed away. I mean, it's just it's pretty tragic. But then personally myself, you go back to being a, a girl dad and it's kind of a hashtag. I mean, you can't imagine what it's like for those other three daughters of his to now they got to grow up without a father, without their sister, like that. That's I, just, I can't get over it when I keep thinking about that part of it. It is certainly so sad, and we mentioned the career that he had. But uh, like you mentioned, even in your career, you're the head coach of the Alabama Crimson Tide. But to you, what's most important is being a husband and especially a father of your three girls. Yeah, I mean, the basketball is still a game. I mean, it's a job here for us, but that, that's family. I mean, that's, I mean, too, you see him right there with his daughters. I mean, that's, that's what made him happy. That's what makes us happy when we go home so I just just tragic I think Vanessa came out just today I fired with the first public statement I can't imagine what it's like for her to go through it and just it's gonna be it's gonna be hard for, for a long time I mean they'll, they'll never get over the fact that their husband and dad no longer here to help raise them and he was doing a really good job from you know all indications of being a great great father to his kids after he retired so certainly our condolences from the Alabama basketball program on the loss of a basketball legend, Kobe Bryant, as well as his daughter and the friends that were with them on that helicopter crash. We'll have more on Alabama basketball when we return to the NATO show. Jaden Shackelford from Z. Big three from John Petty. Reese is able to slice his way down the lane. Blocked at the rim. Kyra Lewis, who's playing with motivation. Great defense right there by Kyra Lewis. Going to get him a layup. Or a dunk. Reese driving to the basket. Reese with the dunk off of the feed. Transition again. They'll count it. And one. Spin. Finish. Kyra Lewis Jr. has got 24. Final Alabama 77, K State 74. Some of the great moments from a winning Saturday at Coleman Coliseum when Alabama defeated Kansas State in the Big 12 SEC Challenge. Coach, going into that matchup, what were you looking for the Crimson Tide to do against the Wildcats? I thought we had to pick our defensive intensity back up. I thought Carr did a really good job on their guards. You know, I thought I thought we were pretty good defensively. The rebounding was where we had the problem with. So. But you know, overall, you know, we came out and built a 16-point lead. Would have liked to have blown it open. Didn't happen, but did think it was good that we won a close game. We needed to win a close game. So to be able to execute down the stretch, we've been working on that stuff in practice. I was proud of our guys late in the game for executing what we needed to do. Crimson Tide able to grind out a victory against Kansas State as we look back at some of the highlights. And we start with Kyra Lewis, Jr. We knew this would be a big performance for him. Yeah, I mean, he's going against Coach Weber, who coached him in the under 19 team over in Greece so you know he was ready to go I thought he maybe his best defensive game he's had all year won the hard hat that game kind of going away he got deflections and blocks got himself going offensively you know it's funny how that works when you play really hard on defense all of a sudden your offense gets going we've been trying to tell our guys that 
but I, you know, I think he kind of has evidence, you know, right there with the steal. So I, I was really proud of how hard he played, how well he played, and then defense kind of turned his offense for him. Defense was huge for the Crimson Tide with nine steals, eight blocks in this ball game. You mentioned Kyrie, he had three of those. Yeah, I mean, Kyrie did a great job challenging their guards, and you know, you see Petty and Reese. I thought Reese played well in the defensive end with some black shots and kind of gets us out in our transition game, which is where we're at our best. <clears throat> you know, it help, helps to have her back healthy too, and I think Reese is starting to get a lot more healthy. You see Reese making some athletic plays. I mean, that block he came in from the free throw line and covered up for us was big. So, Reese's been playing well here lately. Maybe, you know, if we can keep her healthy and playing well, that really helps us as a team play a lot better on defense. Jaden Shackelford, another big performance with 11 points for the Crimson Tide. Yeah, I mean, Shaq's really starting to come around. I mean, he's, you know, now that we're 20 games in, he's not really a freshman anymore. He's got enough minutes under his belt. You kind of consider him more, you know, a seasoned guy. He's been in so many games, you don't really count him as a freshman anymore. Been looking at the intensity inside Coleman Coliseum, once again proving this is one of the toughest places to play in the SEC. Yeah, our student sections come big. I mean, it's great. You know, we're starting to get the crowd into it. They're pretty full. They're giving us a lift when we need to. We need to get a big stop late in that game, and they're behind us. So it's great to see our, our players obviously like playing in front of big crowds like that. And the Crimson Tide get a big win, a three-point victory against Kansas State. You got to be proud as well to help the SEC in the Big 12 SEC Challenge. Yeah, we wanted to do our part. You know, non-conference, we didn't really play that great at times. So I thought this was big for us. You know, we're playing a lot better now than we were in November and even December. So I thought it was big for our guys to get that win there. So it was a four-game winning streak for the Crimson Tide, and next up was a road trip to Baton Rouge to take on the first place LSU Tigers. We'll talk about Alabama's trip to the Maravich Center when we come back to the Nate Oates Show. Too exclusive. It's probably me and JV. Yeah, we did the same right there. We, it was like 475. J. Cole, probably Two Face, Friday Night Lights. <laughs> that was fun because I had JP driving. He know how to, you know, he got his WLs, his whip license. Get your whip license, baby. <laughs> and then we did sit ups in the water, like going underwater. Just that I really love doing whatever it takes. Win. I could not finish. Smith gets it back and he can. Count the bucket. And welcome back to the Nate Oates Show. So, Coach, we just saw the victory against Kansas State, your basketball team, on a four-game winning streak. What were you looking to do against LSU on Wednesday? And we really wanted to clean up the rebounding issues that we had against K-State. That was our point of emphasis going into that game. You know, I thought our defense had been decent. We just didn't rebound it. So we wanted our defense to continue being good, then just clean up the rebounds. It didn't really happen that way. They kind of killed us on the offensive boards. I thought our offensive rebounding was much better, but our defensive rebounding, it's still something we got to work on. So, I mean, LSU is a really athletic team. There's a reason they're 7-0 in the uh, SEC. So they're athletic. We had to do a better job on the glass. We had to do a better job getting back in transition. We didn't do a great job containing their guards and do a great job keeping their bigs off the glass or out of the rim. They scored, I think, 68 out of their 90 points were at the free throw line or in the lane. We fouled too much. I mean, that's kind of been our big three areas, like defensive rebounding, transition defense, fouling. And I didn't think we were great in any of those three that game, to be honest with you. It was a charged atmosphere in Baton Rouge as the 6-0 Tigers hosted the 4-2 Crimson Tide at the Maravich Center. Jaden Shackelford, another big performance for Alabama. Yeah, you know, he ends up leading us in minutes that game. He's been pretty solid. You know, they, they we went a little bit smaller. They kind of played two guards and three power forwards, and just with the rotation, the way it was, and Beetle being out, you know, Shaq ended up with quite a few minutes. Kyrie got in some foul trouble, and Shaq wasn't. He had some big shots for us. Oh, he's playing, he's playing really well. We just got to keep him focused on the defensive end. And I think his offense will come when he really focuses in on defense. He's a pretty instinctual offensive player. He had some big moments for Alabama. Same could be said for Kyra Lewis, Jr. 13 points. Most of his work was done in the second half. Yeah, I thought he played much better in the second half. When we got going, you know, we just didn't have enough on the defensive end. But our offensive 
you know, on the offensive end, you know, Kyra really got us going. We got out in transition. You know, he ends up with eight assists on the game. I thought he was tacking like we needed him to. So if we can take that aggressiveness in the second half of that game and bring it to the first half of the Arkansas game, I think we'll be all right. Other times when he needed a big three-pointer, Alex Reese delivered. Yeah, I thought he was really good. He was big for us in the first half. If he didn't show up in the first half like he did, we'd have been blown out of that gym. So Alex really played well, played hard, was focused. I thought that was one of his better games of the year. So Alex Reese, 17 points for the Crimson Tide. Also going inside, nice touch at the rim. Yeah, we post him a little bit. You know, he got some pick and rolls, mixed in some rolls with the pops. I just, you know, Alex has been playing well. Really like Alex's game, and I was happy for him to play well. We just, as a team, didn't play well enough to get a win in a big time you know, place like that. I mean, LSU's number one in the league. We gotta play better to get a win on the road at the number one team. Yeah, LSU picks up the 14-point victory in Baton Rouge, and now the Tigers 7-0 on the year in league play, but your basketball team coach 4-3. What are the main lessons you take from the LSU game? Yeah, I think we get, again, defensive rebound is just big, and we can never forget about our transition D. I just thought we had gotten that somewhat cleaned up for a while, came back to haunt us that game, and then we've got to really learn how to guard without foul. And they went to the free throw line 18 times in the first half. There's 17 out of 18 in the first half. So I've had an issue with those three things pop up throughout the course of the year. All three of them were a problem against them. So we really got to clean all three of those up against Arkansas. The rebounding is the one that concerns me probably the most because it was a major problem against K-State too. So transition D, defensive rebounding, garden without fouling. It's going to be a big points emphasis here leading into the Arkansas game. Jaden Shackelford led the Crimson Tide in scoring against LSU. And when we come back, we'll have more on the Crimson Tide freshmen as you watch the Nate Oates Show. JP. We have a lot of inside jokes and stuff, but he initiates most of them, so I think that's why I'm gonna get him funniest on the team. Uh, I'm gonna get that one to myself. You know, I hit the wall, but we got this little dance we do, like the whole team. <laughs> a quick wall. Ooh, a Gunniverse, more recent one. I'm having major waves, just like I made the rain. We went through some, like, some little strenuous stuff, but. We battled through it and we became like super, super close. Coach, you got to be proud of the development of Jaden Shackford as his freshman year continues. Yeah, he's been really good. I mean, he came in as a scorer, still can really score at a high level. He's gotten much, much better defensively and just figuring out all the little aspects of being a college guard. So really happy with how he's come along. You know, you got to keep him coming. He's a big part of what we're doing. Don't have a ton of depth here right now, so he's needing to play a lot of minutes, a lot of some minutes at LSU, which is big for a freshman guard in a game that big. But, you know, I'm proud of really just how much he's matured to understand how important the defensive side is. It's hard for freshmen. They haven't really ever had to guard. I mean, it, you know, he's averaging 40-some points a game in high school. Whether he guards or not, I'm sure they just left him in and let him shoot. I and mean, when you're <laughs> averaging that many points, they got to be on the floor. Where in college, we really need him to guard at a high level every time down. He's getting a lot better at it. And you want him to take the open shot when it's available. Yeah, I mean, he's got a green light. I mean, he can shoot it. He's, you know, and that's the other thing, too, coming from high school. Sometimes you got to work with them on what, what's a good shot, what's a bad shot. Every shot for him was probably a great shot in high school because he's probably playing with guys that he's a lot better than. So here we had to tame some of that back, but I, I don't want to. I don't want him to ever be non-aggressive. I need him being super aggressive because that's who he is. So kind of having one-on-ones with him and dad, and I think he's figuring that out pretty, pretty well here. Coach, I know you don't go on Twitter very much during the season, but why don't we take a look and see what's going on across the interwebs this week concerning Alabama basketball. James Chandler, very big win talking about Alabama's effort against Kansas State. So we certainly love seeing that from at JCBama67. Yeah, I mean, it was a big win against K-State. We needed to get the win. Nine conference, our last nine conference game of the year. I thought we played hard, gave an effort. So I think the fans are recognizing the effort these guys are giving on a night-to-night -night basis. 
SEC Network with a Roll Tide Roll graphic after Alabama's three-point win. And again, it just meant a lot for the conference to get victories in the Big 12 SEC Challenge. Tyler must just got pumping there, I see. <laughs> looks like a little stronger than usual. But no, it was good for the SEC for us to get that win. You know, we, we didn't end up winning the uh, challenge, but we, we did our part this year. So hopefully we continue to do that in years uh, moving forward. Danny Stu, God bless you, natives. I'm guessing maybe that was a reply to when I did the girl dad tweet. I, I'm not sure, to be honest with you. Maybe he's just happy we're winning games. Absolutely. Big Alabama maybe, basketball Maybe I just need to be blessed. I don't know. I, just, I do need to be blessed sometimes, you know. How about our rowing coach, Glenn Putre, with a nice tweet? Rowing, I see them out there. Sometimes I take my girls into school. I'm going over the bridge. I see them out there rowing. That, that's, that's a hard sport to coach. I don't think I'd want to be out there on that uh, river when it's that cold. So good, good to get some uh, love from Glenn. I we'll have to make it out to a, uh, a, crew, a crew meet. Is that what you call it, a meet? Uh, yeah, meet, yeah. All right, Alabama, John Petty, they gave him the camera, they gave him the phone. Here comes this tweet right with the student section. He loved it. Yeah, I think he's comfortable with the camera in hand. Looks like he's <laughs> done that before. So he's uh, he's one of our more outspoken guys. It was a big win for us. So it's good that uh, John got to enjoy it in the student section there. Well, that's just a glimpse of what it's like inside Coleman Coliseum for an Alabama home basketball game. And Alabama's got two home games coming up. We'll talk about Arkansas and Tennessee when we come back to Tuscaloosa. Coleman Coliseum on the University of Alabama campus and coach this building will be rocking coming up on Saturday against Arkansas and also coming up on Tuesday against Tennessee. You got to be glad that your basketball team is getting back home. Yeah, it's great to play at home. It's been filling Coleman up. It's great to be in Coleman. I think our players play off the fans energy. It's been great here lately. So yeah, a huge one against Arkansas. I mean, they were one of the best teams in the SEC nine conference wise with their record and how they're playing. So, and then they're right in the mix with us here in the middle, uh, middle of the pack here. Yeah, how have they changed with Eric Musselman now as their head coach? Yeah, I mean, Coach Musselman does a great job. Obviously, you know, he's giving them freedom on offense. They're playing really hard on defense. They're playing small ball. So, you know, they don't have a lot of size. They play with four guards. Sometimes they play with five guards. So we got to really guard them, keep them out of the lane. Got one of the best shooters in the country. You know, they, they, they do a really good job. They give their players freedom and areas where they need freedom. I mean, they've got a bunch of guys that can score it over the floor, and so we're, we're going to have to do a great job on the defensive end. So it's the Razorbacks in town on Saturday. Then on Tuesday night, Rick Barnes brings his Tennessee Volunteers to town, one of the best teams in the league last year. Kind of up and down so far this year. Yeah, obviously the injury hurt them with their point guard being out for the year. You know, and Coach Barnes does an unbelievable job. I think he was National Coach of the Year last year, So and they were number one in the country, I think, longer than anybody last year. So. Don't quite have the talent they had last year, but obviously really well coached, play hard, more than capable of beating anyone at any time. So we've got two winnable but really tough games here coming up at home that we need to we need to take care of. And you gotta like the home winning streak that Alabama's had. It really has been a home court advantage for the Crimson Tide. Yeah, no question. Student section's been great, the overall fans have been great. We're getting pretty pretty full of capacity crowds and I think that's big. Our players energy's been good. When we need to stop, the crowd gets into it when we make big plays, they, they're getting into it and kind of get the momentum going for us. Coach, we look forward to Alabama against Arkansas and Tennessee coming up. Thanks for your time. Roll Tide. Roll Tide. Thanks, Roger. For Nate Oates, I'm Roger Hoover. Thanks again for watching the Nate Oates Show from Tuscaloosa. This has been a presentation from Learfield IMG College.